Hey guys, this is Emily with Snake Discovery, and today we'll be discussing one of many controversial subjects in the reptile community. We'll be going over the pros and cons of each side, and then discussing what we have found to work best with our own animals. This is one of those subjects that a lot of reptile keepers and breeders have strong opinions about, and as a result, we will be keeping an eye on the comments section below. Uh, constructive comments are more than welcome. However, if things kind of get out of hand, basically harassment will not be tolerated, so those comments will be removed, and if it gets too bad, we will have to disable comments for this video. So please remember to play nice in the comments section below. Anyway, I hope this video helps you out when it comes to taking care of your own reptiles, and enjoy! Today we'll be talking about whether it's best to use paper towels or newspaper for bedding or an actual substrate. But first, of course, this is my western fox snake Vulpix. She will hopefully be a breeder snake of ours this year. It all depends on if our male figures out what to do. Let's start with paper towels, and a lot of these discussion points apply to newspaper too, but I'm just going to say paper towels, but you can assume that I also mean newspaper. Paper towels are cheap and they are easy to clean. When an animal goes to the bathroom, you simply remove the soiled paper towel and replace it with a clean one, and that helps you keep a clean, sterile environment for your animal. They also allow you to monitor your animal's droppings easier. You can see if there's any blood in their stool, or you can see if you're treating for like parasites, if there's any worms in their stool. So for that reason, we do recommend using paper towels as a substrate when you are quarantining any animal or treating them for any parasites or other illnesses. For example, with snake mites, if you're treating a snake with mites, paper towels allow you to see the effects of the treatment by visually seeing dead mites on top of the paper towels after the treatment. So it's a really good way to monitor treatment processes too. The cons to using paper towels is that they don't look very natural, they don't replicate a nice natural environment to an animal, but the animal doesn't necessarily care as long as their temperature and humidity requirements are met, so that's really something that's up to you as the owner and what you want the environment to look like yourself. Another drawback to using paper towels is that snakes may accidentally ingest them while they're eating their food. We've heard plenty of stories of snakes eating their mouse or their rat, and then that rodent sticks to the paper towel, so the snake, being not a very smart animal, will will admit it, will eat the paper towel too, and that can cause impaction issues, or it can lead to regurgitation, or it can even lead to death in some cases. However, in our opinion, the biggest drawback to using paper towels is that they do not offer any digging opportunities for species that like to burrow. There are plenty of species of snakes and lizards like Euromastics that like to dig in the wild, and by using paper towels, they have nothing to dig in. On the other hand, if you offer a substrate to an animal, especially a species that likes to burrow naturally in the wild, they have plenty of opportunities to do so using a substrate. It offers a lot of enrichment opportunities for them as well. Using a substrate also makes the environment look more natural to the snake, which again is based on your opinion on what you'd like the environment to look like, but there's also a wide variety of substrates to choose from for your reptiles. If you have more of a deserty type reptile, you can use a drier substrate, or if you have a snake that likes well-drained soils like hognose snakes, you can give them aspen fibers so that they can burrow, but those aspen fibers stay dry. Whereas if you have a more tropical species of snake, like say a false water cobra, you can use something like cypress bedding to retain humidity levels for them. Of course, we've kind of touched on it earlier, but if you use a substrate, the snake, if it ingests some of that substrate, it's only going to ingest a small amount, so, you know, a small amount that sticks to the rodent. You still want to reduce the amount of substrate they ingest as much as you can, but at least using a substrate, make sure that they don't eat all of the substrate in their enclosure like they would if they had a paper towel that got stuck to their rodents. Another pro to using substrate is that you can easily spot clean different sections in the enclosure. So say for our snakes, we feed them on Sunday nights mostly, and we're used to them pooping on Wednesday or Thursday. So on those days, we go into the enclosure and we just clean out the small spots that are soiled in the bedding. Whereas if you used uh, paper towels, when a snake poops, it goes everywhere and it gets soaked up by all the paper towels, so you pretty much have to remove all of their decorations, their water dish, remove all the paper towels, and then replace them with clean ones. So when it comes to spot cleaning, using an actual substrate makes it a little bit easier. But when you have to do a thorough cleaning of the enclosure and you use the substrate, then it takes a little bit more work than paper towels do. You have to remove all of the decor, the water dish, you have to dump out all of the bedding, and if you use like a glass tank, you can't necessarily pick up the tank and dump it out, you have to scoop it out manually. So it does take a little bit more work to do a deep cleaning of a tank that uses substrate. 
Another con to using substrate is that it's usually a little bit more expensive than using just paper towels. But if you know where to go, like we buy our Aspen fibers for $5 for a huge bale at Fleet Farm, if you know where to go, it's very similarly priced to paper towels. However, uh, one more con of using the substrate is that you cannot monitor your animal's droppings as easily because after a snake goes to the bathroom, they may bury their stool with the bedding, which may soak up maybe blood or anything else you want to monitor in their dropping, whereas a paper towel, you'd see it all sitting there. Both paper towels and a substrate can be tweaked and tailored to control humidity levels in the enclosure. With paper towels, you just keep them damp and then that increases humidity. And with substrate, you just use a humidity retaining soil like cypress or topsoil or like eco earth and those will retain humidity levels as well. A happy medium that a lot of people with lizards use for substrate would be tiles or linoleum. The nice thing about tiles especially is that you can buy tiles that have kind of a rough coating on them so when the lizard runs across the tile it grinds down their nails at the same time. There's nothing for the lizard to ingest when you use tiles because there's nothing for the food to stick to and cleaning is just a matter of sweeping to clean up little spots here and there or if you have to do a deep cleaning you can actually remove those tiles and just hose them down in the sink. Obviously, you wouldn't want to use tiles on a tropical species of lizard because they don't hold in humidity at all, but rather you would use them for desert dwelling species like leopard geckos or bearded dragons. And on that subject, I do want to quickly touch on the use of sand in a terrarium. It's nowadays pretty much frowned upon to use sand or ground walnut shells in an enclosure because of the impaction risks. If you feed a lizard on a sand substrate, they very well could catch that insect and grab some sand with it and eat that too. And too much sand will collect in their gut and it doesn't pass through and that causes major impaction issues which sometimes leads to death. There is a specific case that I would like to share with you, but it's kind of a graphic image, so I'm going to put a link to it in the description below. And it's of a leopard gecko that ingested too much sand, which caused a major blockage internally and led to his death. You may think that leopard geckos live on sand in the wild, right? They're native to Pakistan, it's a very hot, dry climate. They are living on sand and they eat insects on sand too, but that is not necessarily true. The sand they live on in the wild is very compacted and it's really more of a rocky environment instead of the loose sand that people may provide them in captivity. So it's not a natural environment to give them just loose sand in their terrarium. Something that may seem very similar to sand, but it is in fact different, would be using a seed mixture for the substrate for Euromastix lizards. Breeders and pet stores will often use a seed base because the Euromastix will actually eat and they crunch down seeds in the wild. So if they accidentally eat their substrate, since it's seeds, it doesn't hurt them at all. So you really have to know the natural history of your animal before deciding on what substrate to give it. Finally, what do we do with our animals? Well, with our sub-adults, Burmese python and reticulated pythons, we give them a newspaper bedding because when they go to the bathroom, it goes everywhere and we would have to change out their bedding regardless, even if it was a substrate. We'd have to swap it all out. So just for ease of care and to make sure everything stays as clean as possible, we give them the newspaper bedding. However, with almost all of our other animals, all of our other snakes, we give them aspen fibers because they retain the shape of tunnels pretty well. And that's especially useful for our hognose snakes. They love to burrow in those tunnels and they're pretty much hidden throughout the day. But with our more tropical species of snakes, like our false water cobras and our tricolor hognose snakes, we use a combination of cypress bedding and eco-earth mixed together because that mixture maintains a nice high humidity level for those species. We feel that providing a type of substrate that allows for burrowing opportunities gives them a source of enrichment throughout the day. The snakes, especially like our bull snakes, bull snakes don't burrow themselves in, in the wild, but they will go down into mole or vole tunnels to find their food. So in our house or in captivity, they just make their own tunnels with the softer, slightly looser substrate of aspen fibers that we provide them. They love to burrow around and we find them digging all over their enclosures and they just love it. So based on how we see their behavior when using a substrate, we do like to give them that source of enrichment. This is again just one of those subjects that you have to make a decision on on your own after doing your own research. If you have a type of snake that is adamant on burrowing in the wild, then I would highly recommend giving them some sort of substrate to allow them to do that in captivity. However, if you have a snake like a ball python that doesn't necessarily burrow in the wild and you want to give them newspapers or paper towels, 
you can do so and the snake should be just fine. By the way, if you use newspaper as a substrate, uh, Europe and the United States, and we're pretty sure some other places do too, but we weren't able to confirm it, use soy-based ink for, for their newspaper, which is safe for the reptiles. So using newspapers is a safe substrate to use, at least in those areas. And again, don't forget to keep doing your own research to determine what's going to work best for not only you, but for your setup and for, most importantly, your animal in the end. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope it kind of cleared some things up on both sides, and we'll see you next time.